everybody, it's Chef Nicole. Welcome to another Wednesday night demo. I'm here on behalf of the Kitchener Market and I'm very excited to be sharing this recipe with you tonight. When I'm not coming to you with these fun videos on how to make a midweek meal, I spend my time as a personal chef helping my clients with their weeknight meals. This is why I love the opportunity to come into your kitchen and share these recipes with you guys and help you to elevate your midweek meals just a little bit and make them extra special. We are making a stuffed chicken breast. We are gonna be stuffing it with pecans and a little bit of panko breadcrumbs, some seasoning, and just adding lots of flavor. We're gonna finish it off with a pan sauce and I'm gonna let you know, guys know the side dishes that could go along with it. So let's get started. I've already gone ahead and cut up um, one and a half shallots. I just wanna give you guys a quick little demo on how to do this. So we always wanna use our claw where we're tucking our fingers in. If you've been watching any of my videos, you will have seen that before, but I always think it's important to show you guys how we are um, using our knife skills in the kitchen for our, our different recipes. So here, so a shallot, if you're wondering about shallots, shallots kind of fall somewhere between a garlic and an onion. They're a little bit sweeter and uh, just really a really nice addition to this recipe. So I've got my two shallots in there. I'm gonna add a clove of garlic. I'm just gonna give a rough chop on that. I'm not going super fine. I'm just gonna get all of my ingredients for my filling mixed in the bowl. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to butterfly your chicken to leave lots of room for delicious stuffing. So this is super easy guys. So right now I have my garlic and shallots. I have a quarter, probably a little bit more, closer to half a cup of pecan pieces. I did buy these whole and then chop them up. You can buy them already in pieces. You can of course always substitute this in for another nut if you want. Walnuts, almonds would be fantastic in this. And then I'm adding a half a cup of breadcrumbs. That's all going in there as well. Next up, a little pinch of salt. I'm using a Himalayan sea salt. I just like the bright pink color and I just love the flavor that it adds. To this, I'm also adding a sprig of thyme. So I just wanna show you guys quickly how to get all of your thyme leaves off of your stems here. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna hold it and you're just gonna run your finger, your thumb or your finger down. Oh, that did not work as well as I wanted it to. Let's try it from this end. There we go. All right, so I was pulling it the wrong way. So what you're gonna do is hold it so your stem is up like this and you're just gonna pull back and away. I did give my herbs a quick rinse before I'm using them. We wanna make sure that we're washing all of our components of our dish. And so I'm just gonna add a little bit more in here. Mm, I love thyme. And the other thing I'm gonna, oh, it smells so good. I just, that last little bit of thyme that I added just got this great big whiff of this fresh herb, it's so delicious. The last thing I'm gonna add is a couple of sage leaves. I had these left over from Thanksgiving, so I'm just gonna use them up. They're great in this recipe. So what I'm doing here is called a chiffonade. So I'm stacking my sage on top of each other. I'm gonna give it a nice tight roll. And then I'm gonna use my knife and I'm just gonna make little ribbons and I'm gonna do it as tiny as I can. I don't want anyone to bite into a big piece of sage. So I'm just gonna give this a really, really thin chop. When I get to the end, I'm gonna move my fingers out of the way. And then I'm just gonna use the rocker part of my knife to just get that nice and small. Add that in. All right, so I have all my ingredients in now, except I'm going to add some melted butter just to help mix everything together. And then I might need a little bit of olive oil just to get um, it to the consistency that I'm looking for. Yeah, I think I need a little bit more oil in there. So I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Mm. I am excited about this recipe already, guys. It smells delicious in my kitchen already. So if you're making this at home, I bet it smells delicious in yours. Also, I do have my oven preheated to 400 degrees. That's the temperature I'm gonna be cooking it at. And I'm gonna show you the chicken breasts and how to flatten those out coming up next. Nice. 
I have my chicken breast laid out on my cutting board and I'm gonna just show you guys quickly how to butterfly it out so you have a nice flat surface to work with. What you're gonna notice in your chicken breast is the thicker side, what you can do is actually just using your hand, I have a very sharp knife so you wanna be very careful. I've got my hands kind of folded back a little bit so I can feel where my knife is but I can still keep them safely out of the way. And you're just gonna open up that chicken breast so it has a nice place for me to lay the filling. And then I'm gonna use some butcher twine and uh, wrap it up. So here we go. I'm gonna get a bunch of this stuffing in here. As much as I can get without it all pouring out when I tie it up, I want it to still be able to be closed up so that all my herbs don't burn. So I'm just gonna roll this over top of itself like that. I'm gonna tie this up. So I have some butcher twine here and I'm just going to tie this up in a couple of spots just to help that filling stay in. So I'm just wrapped it around, tie one little knot and then I'm gonna just lift it up carefully so I don't lose too much filling underneath. And then I'm just gonna tie it again up here into a little knot and then it's gonna be ready to go into the pan. I'll see you over the stove. Got my chicken seared on one side. I'm just gonna give it a couple minutes to start to cook on this side. Then I'm gonna pop it in the oven. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this before, but honestly guys, an oven proof pan is one of your best friends in the kitchen. So I'm gonna make a pan sauce in this when it comes out. My chicken is out of the oven. While it was finishing cooking just for the last couple of minutes, I did add about half a cup of chicken stock to the pan just to keep my chicken nice and moist while it was cooking. What I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna actually take out some of the pecans that got a little bit dark. I do wanna keep lots of that delicious flavor in there to build my sauce, but I don't want it to taste burnt. I'm just gonna take out the dark pieces, then we're gonna head back over to the stove and I'm gonna show you guys how to make this really quick, simple pan sauce that's gonna go fantastic with this. The pan sauce that I'm making, I did a little bit of shallots and garlic, added some chicken stock, a couple knobs of butter, and about two teaspoons of flour just to help thicken it up. And then to that, I added about three cups of stock. This sauce is nice and thick. So I'm gonna pull it off the heat now. I'm gonna stir in some mustard. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a nice smooth sauce and plate it up. So I'm just using a mesh strainer just to let that sauce go through. It's gonna be nice and smooth, which is what we kind of like when we go out to the restaurant, right? So here's some of the little tips and tricks that can help you guys just to fancy up your sauce at home. If you don't mind some of those herbs and stuff being there, just feel free to just leave it how it is. It's totally fine, absolutely your call. I'm just showing you guys how we do it um, so if you're looking for that um, really smooth sauce, you know how to do it at your house. Our last step before we get this all plated up is to remove our string from our chicken. So I am just gonna get a sharper knife and cut this off and plate it up. Putting the finishing touches on our chicken breasts, this Great side dishes that would go with this would be like a parsnip puree, some mashed potatoes, any of those things would be fantastic. What I'm doing now is I'm just gonna make a little pool of sauce in the middle of my plate. I'm going to take my chicken that I cut on the bias and I'm just gonna stand it up in the middle there, just like that. I'm gonna finish it with just a couple sprigs of fresh thyme, just to think it'll look so pretty and just add some really nice color to the plate. Oh, a little string in. And then if you wanted to, you could even do a little extra drizzle of sauce over the top, because who doesn't love sauce, right? Mm. Okay. So there you have it guys, your pecan and panko stuffed chicken breast. Midweek meals took no time at all from start to finish. It maybe took about 25 minutes and you could definitely cook up your potatoes or your rice or whatever side dish you want to go along with this. Green beans would be a great vegetable that I would serve alongside this. I look forward to seeing you guys 
at the Kitchener Market or online very soon. Have a great evening.